to make all impossible things possible. And if you take the time to humble and pray and seek the face of God, then He will reach down by His grace and mercy. He'll respond to your call like the woman with the issue of love.
just want to thank you, God. Hallelujah. Tonight's the night. Take the time to reach out to God. Amen. And have faith in Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. And trust Him with all your heart, mind, and soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just praise the Lord.
praising God here in Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. This is a Sunday night. It's Father's Day, and I'm sure that many of you are celebrating and honoring the Father's Day with your fathers and so forth. And I know that it's a quiet event that's taking place in the world, but Praise God, we're all doing something even more exciting here tonight because we're honoring our Heavenly Father. Because we're taking the time to come before Him and reaching for His grace and His mercy. And we're not only reaching us here tonight, but we're coming right into your home, right in front of the YouTube, amen, channel, right on your TV or your computer or your cell phone, whatever way you want to hear. Maybe you'll be listening on the CD or maybe you're listening on the DVD. It doesn't matter which way you, you're, you're coming and being contacted by God. And it, it doesn't matter even if it's even a week or a month or a year from now when you hear this message. I honestly believe that God is going to touch you. And uh, Sunday night is what they call the Miracle Night Sunday night. And we're coming from all the way from Sudbury, Ontario, Abundant Life Healing Center, right in the heart of Sudbury. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Tonight we're going to be talking about how to reach for your miracle. Amen. Did you hear me? How many of you want to reach your miracle? Now your miracle could be just about anything. Amen. Maybe you need to get saved. Maybe you need to get delivered. Maybe you need to be raised from the dead. Glory to God. It doesn't matter what condition you're in, but I can rest assure you that Jesus Christ is alive forevermore. He's the same yesterday. He's the same tomorrow. And He's the same forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Tonight you're going to mention about a story about a leper who came to Jesus. Now, interesting thing about it, why in the world would the leper go to all this trouble and decided one day when he heard about Jesus that he's gonna go and see Jesus, amen? If you're looking for the scriptures in Matthew 8 and 2, praise God. This is exactly the same reason for you that are sitting at home or you that are here present, amen? This is the reason you should respond in reaching out to Jesus like the leper did. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. But at the same time, when we stop to realize when looking at the story of the leper, and I know that uh, you don't really find this part of, the, part of the story written in the Bible, but I'm kind of speculating and trying to understand what was it that was causing this leper to come and what was standing in the way of this leper in order to come to Jesus. We have to understand it's the same thing as you're been facing your circumstances and you've been going through ups and downs and circumstances in life and but still as you're facing your circumstances you still got to realize there is always something standing in front of your miracle. There's always something trying to interfere with you. Sometimes it's an unbelief. Maybe you don't have the confidence to come before him or whatever. Hallelujah. So what kind of circumstance stood in the way of this leper? Hallelujah. Perhaps we can relate to someone being a leper in the time of Jesus. When you were a leper in those days, it was very difficult for someone to be a leper because you were an outcast. You were a person that nobody wanted to get around. You're like a plague walking around. Everybody was filled with fear and worry. Think that if you get too close to this leper, that the contagious disease that, that could not be cured might come upon you. And so the people, the moment they saw a leper coming, because he dressed with a cloak over himself, the leper's cloak, you know, when they saw the leper, then the leper would have to announce to everybody, so everybody knows that he has leprosy, so that people would stay away from him. It's like, a, like telling people, don't come near me, don't touch 
nasty. I'm contagious. I got leprosy. And if you touch me, it will jump on you and you're going to get sick. So stay away from me. You know, when you start crying out like that, when you're walking in a crowd, you can imagine how it feels for you that you're afraid to go and touch someone because it deep in your heart, you don't want nobody to catch the disease that's in your life. And at the same time, the people, when they realized, saw the leper, he did not have to shout. He didn't have to say nothing. Everybody else would say, there's a leper. Everybody stay away from that man. Hey, get out of here. We don't want you here. Go back to your leper colony. Hallelujah. So as a result of this, he was isolated. He's an outcast. He's got a contagious disease. People are afraid of him. And he's afraid to come into a public place because he would be mistreated, persecuted, and everything else. They'd be throwing stones at him. You know, and they'd be more or less condemning him. So why did he then decide to come to Jesus? It's because he thought, well, if no, if somebody can help me, because I've heard that Jesus healed ten lepers. And I heard the story of these ten lepers who got healed by Jesus. And one of them came back and went back to Jesus and, and gave him glory. And he's now following Jesus and he's completely healed. And he met me the other day and said, hey, you know, there's someone who can help you. His name is Jesus. So that kind of thought into this leper's heart that maybe there is hope for me. When you're being knocked down and pushed down and you may feel like you're no good for nothing, that thing can affect your mind, that can affect your thoughts, that can affect your faith. When you're isolated from your family and the family don't want nothing to do with you or they're afraid to have something to do with you because they'll get persecuted by the, by the synagogue that they're attending, say, hey, if you get any closer to that man, we will excommunicate you from our church or synagogue. Amen? Hallelujah. But then he still decided, well, I'm going to go and see Jesus. Amen? Can you imagine that when, G when, when this leper began to decide to go to Jesus, we know that the way this leper started drawing nigh to Jesus, he began to praise him and began to worship him, began to cry out, thou son of David, have mercy on me. You got to understand that when he was approaching Jesus, he was worshiping, he was praising him, he was magnifying, he was he was giving him all the glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah! Why? Why did he look, did that? Because he had learned that whenever you come before your God's presence, you come with praise and rejoicing and thanksgiving, and then you begin to humble yourself before the Lord of God, and you bring your requests before Him. And ask for mercy that perhaps God will give you grace and mercy and touch his life. Amen. Hallelujah. So when he came to Jesus, because he'd been affected by his circumstances, because he's been an outcast, and all these things that affected his mind. So when he came to Jesus, his approach to him after he was worshiping him, and he, he came boldly before him, he wasn't worried about what people would say and he said well I'm just going to take a chance maybe I'm going to get stoned but I'm going to press and I'm just going to go and, and, and talk to him hallelujah and when he came to Jesus he said this was his question in his heart and you can understand why he had a question like this if it be your will Lord if it is your will did you ever stop and think about when you're coming to God that you may have questions about if God is able to heal you or deliver you or set you free? Maybe you're in a lifestyle of sin that you think that you can never be forgiven or you've done something so terrible that you're not worthy. You know, you've been an outcast. You're already being persecuted. You're being put down and so forth. So when you come to God like this leper did, if it's possible, if it is your will. If it is your will. Hallelujah. 
he stops and he pauses and he says, you can make me whole. But you've got to understand in his doubt and wondering if it was God's will for, for Jesus to touch him and heal him, yet at the same time his heart that was filled with questions of doubt and not sure, yet there was a confidence, there was a faith inside of his heart. He said, you can, you have the power, you have the authority, you can make me whole. You've been casting out devils, healing the sick, and you've been raising the dead. I know that you have the authority, you have the power, because the Spirit of the Lord God is upon you, because God has anointed you with the Holy Ghost. Yet, if it is your will, hallelujah, you stop and think about it for one minute, about your situation. You say, God, I know you can heal the sick. I know that you can make a way for me, in spite of how impossible it may appear. But yet deep in your heart, in your circumstance, you're saying, but if it's your will, God. Amen. You're stuck in wondering with a question in your mind. And when you have a question in your heart and mind, it's kind of hard to have full 100% faith. Because there's that ounce of doubt that sits there that's lodged in the depths of your heart. Hallelujah. Another question was if it's your will. You wonder, would Jesus turn you away? When you come tonight and you come to Jesus, would Jesus turn away from you? Would he reject you? Or would you be treated in the same manner like the religious people did. Because the moment the religious people saw a leper, they said, get out of here, leper. Stay away from us. You have nothing to do with you. How many times have people that are religious will not show no mercy on you? They're instead, they judge you and condemn you and tell you that there's no hope for you. And they look on you and even spit on you. See, the religious world does not have the ability to show mercy and to bring deliverance, amen? Have no ability to do anything for it because they know that they do not have the ability or the power to change a person's life. Hallelujah. Can you understand how hard this was in fact, some people, some a leper probably say, if I come into your church or synagogue, I'm afraid the whole roof will cave up on me. I feel so unclean and unfilthy and no good for nothing. Your, your church roof will collapse if I just walk into your church. You know, all kinds of doubts that are in your mind and preconceived ideas because of being judged and because of being condemned because of being ridiculed and forsaken and cast aside, not accepted. But yet we see here Jesus, when he came to Jesus, the amazing thing about Jesus that Jesus did not start condemning the man. Amen. Did you hear me? He did not condemn him. He didn't push him aside nor reject him, but he was listening to his cry. Hallelujah. If it be your will, you can make me whole. Hallelujah. Three years ago, there was a situation that happened a couple years ago. A man by the name of Rene and his wife Jenny. They live in Ottawa. At one time, they were attending our church. And so I received a call from his wife and said, pray for my husband. My husband has a flesh-eating disease. And doctors say there is no cure for this disease. So we want you to pray that you can pray that when the doctors operate on his arm that that they will remove that flesh-eating disease and spare his life. 
It was flesh hitting his head that was hitting on his arm. So, you know, we prayed and we believed and we called on God and everything else. After the first operation, the second operation, the third operation, and trying to remove this flesh eating disease. Amen. Just kept going on and on and on. Hallelujah. You know what I mean. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's one of those things that seems impossible, amen. So after seven operations of trying to cut out this flesh-eating disease from his arm, he finally realized that there was no hope whatsoever. The doctors had given all hope. So the doctor said, well, we have exhausted operation after operation. The man is getting weaker and weaker by the minute. And he said to the man, there's only one last solution that we have to do with your body. We're going to cut off your arm right from your shoulder, completely off, in order to stop this disease, flesh eating disease from spreading and going to your body. Because if we don't cut it off, this arm, completely, you're going to die. So this was uh, Sunday afternoon after service. I received a phone call from his wife, Jenny. She began to call me and say, Pastor, we have a, a terrible situation. The doctors are saying the only solution to save my husband is to cut his arm completely off. Now they live in Ottawa. And so I said, okay. I said, but can you come to Ottawa and pray for him? And lay your hands upon him, anoint him with oil. Do anything and pray that God will spare his life, that they will not take his arm off, that God will intervene and heal him and make him whole. So here I was on the phone and I said, Okay, very well. I'm going to come. I'm going to come and see, see him. And I will go to Ottawa, but I won't be there till tomorrow. And it just happened to be next day was a holiday, was some kind of civic holiday. So, so that there was nobody working. All the banks were closed and everything else. I said, well, I'll come tomorrow. Okay, I'll come. I'll drive tomorrow to Ottawa, go to the hospital and meet with you and I'll come and pray for your husband. Amen. And while I was saying this thing, I was thinking to myself, here I am going to go and I said bye. And I was thinking to myself, and while well, Brother Norm was still there and beside me, heard me talking on the phone because I was with the speakerphone on, he heard the whole conversation. And I was thinking to myself, how in the world am I going to get to Ottawa now? Because right at that moment, that very day, I did not have enough gas to get out of town. Amen. So I said to myself, I began to pray within my heart, God, I need some gas money. And I wasn't saying it to anybody. I was saying, God, I can't get there unless you give me some gas money. That very moment as I was thinking that, Norm just spoke out to me. He said, I'll go with you and I'll pay the gas. <laughs> I'll pay the gas and I'll even give you something to eat in the meantime. So I thought, well, praise the Lord. I said, well, that's a great miracle, amen, in itself. So we got to understand, next day we got up early in the morning and we begin to drive to to Ottawa, it takes a good long time to go to get there. It gets there from eight to 10 hours. When you're driving, it's 500 kilometers. And so we begin to go forth, you know, all depends on what kind of traffic and everything else. And so we drove and on the way there, what was happening? We were praying. So why were you praying? Because I had no idea what that God was going to do. And in myself, I felt so helpless in myself. 
that here they're asking me to pray for an incurable disease to be healed and I'm not even sure what to do. But the only thing that came to my mind that when Jesus was ministering that uh, one, of the, one of the rulers of the synagogue had come to him says, come and lay hands on my daughter that she may live. And Jesus right away left the multitude and went towards the daughter's house. Hallelujah. To lay hands upon her that she might live. Hallelujah. So I realized that the family had called for help and they were reaching out in faith and they were calling for help and I believe they weren't just calling for me for help but they were calling on Jesus for help and now I was calling on Jesus to intervene as I was striving and as I was praying and I said God what do I say? What do I do when I get there? Lord show me what to do. Speak to me. I'm praying and seeking and yielding to God while I'm driving this Bible kilometers to go to Ottawa and then deep in my heart I'm just continually praying and I'm not even sure what's going to happen and all this time when I'm driving there traveling in this trip I'm not hearing a word from God boy I finally found the hospital where he was at and I finally got to the hospital and went in I found the, the room where he was at there's the whole family there's three children a wife, hallelujah, and actually four children. The youngest one's about six or seven years old. The oldest was 16 years old. And I'm listening as I was going in there and I'm hearing the, the cry of the children. The oldest boy was saying, he said, if I had some kind of machine, then I can just blast this flesh eating disease. I would shoot and destroy it. And I said, yes, I understand, but I realize what you're saying is a good thing. But I've got to understand, we don't have that kind of machine. Hallelujah. But there is someone who can destroy that disease, and his name is Jesus. So then I heard one of the daughters that were crying and saying, and she was weeping and crying. She was saying in her heart, Oh God, can you be merciful? Don't let my father lose his arm. And they were all praying and weeping and crying. And David, there was a concern and a compassion. And, and me and Norm were standing in there. And I took the oil and we began to go towards him. And we haven't spent no more than five minutes in the, in the room when we anointed with oil. And all of a sudden, when I anointed him with oil, something happened. He actually choked it when we prayed for him. I said, whoa, what happened? And I just said, praise the Lord. One of the things that I remember telling them is that we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know. We're not a physician. We're not a doctor. We now don't know. We cannot see where the sickness or disease is. But we're going to trust in God that God is going to show the doctor. Hallelujah. He's going to examine and, and if the disease is gone, the doctor will show him that they don't have to operate and he'll be saved that way. Because we will not be able to, to say that. But the doctor can confirm if he's healed. And if not, we'll just pray that God give grace that he'll at least survive. But we're going to press God's will to be done in this situation. Whether you heal him and make him whole, or whether you spare his life by cutting his arm, we're trusting you, God, that you have the authority, you have the power, and we're standing still believing that you're going to spare his life, and we're believing that he's going to keep his arm in the name of Jesus. After we pray, I got back in my truck and I drove all the way back to Sudbury. Well, next morning, I got a call around 7 o'clock. His wife was calling me. She said, Jenny was telling me. She says, guess what? Did you hear the good news? I said, no, I didn't hear any news. He says, the doctors, after you left, began to prepare him for the operation to cut his arm off. They did all kinds of tests before they do that. 
and everything, and at 11.30 that night, you see, you got to understand, I left around 4 or 5 o'clock. Around 11 o'clock, 11.30, the doctor calls me. He says, I have examined and done everything that we're supposed to do before we operate to remove the whole shoulder off the arm off the shoulder. But for some strange reason, we just cannot see no flesh-eating disease in this man, anywhere in his body, not even in his blood. It's disappeared, it's all gone. So I said, praise the Lord. So they say, we're not going to have an operation. So he spared his arm. So we begin to praise and thank God that God had intervened supernaturally and had healed this man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His name is Rene. And so, but then the wife said, you know, my husband's going to call you in a couple, couple of days because, you know, they put in a medical, medical, uh, uh, coma so so he would not feel the affliction because he had to seven operations he was a lot of affliction and when he comes out of that medical coma he will be able to talk to you i say okay because he's got something to tell me. i said really okay he said two days later this man Rene, called me he said to me you know when i was in a medical coma the lord took me into heaven and I went there and I saw my grandfather and my wife's grandfather, who's Mr. Balan. And I saw them and they both talked to me and they said, it's not your time to come here. You need to go back. And then I saw Jesus and Jesus said, you can't, it's not your time to come here. I'm not finished with you. You need to go back because the people are praying down there. You got to go back. I got to honor their prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then Rene said to me, Isn't it kind of amazing that you have to come to death's door before you finally surrender to God and give your heart to Him? That you, you have to come to the death's door to you realize that the only hope you have now is in Jesus? And that's exactly. You may be at the end of yourself, whatever you are, you're like the letter that came to Jesus, if it be your will, you can make me whole. And then Jesus responds to that, I will come and heal you. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that means that very moment when Jesus says, I will come and heal you, he says, he said, be now made whole because of your disease, that your faith has made you whole. Did you know that God responds when you respond as you're reaching out and believing for your miracle, but you're going to realize you're going to press through all the barriers of doubt and unbelief, and you're going to move everything out of the way so you can reach God and say, God, whatever it takes, I'm going to move every hindrance out of my life so I can receive my miracle. Do you want God to touch you and make you whole? Are you ready for God to heal you and make you whole? Are you ready to reach for your miracle? Are you ready to pray whatever prayer that you need for God to do for you? Are you going to believe that whatever you ask in His name that He's going to do it? Because He has the ability, He has the power. And if you're not saved, you can have the opportunity to open your heart to Jesus and ask Him to wash and cleanse you and save and ask him to come into your heart this very moment and Jesus will step down from heaven and come into your heart. He'll wash your sins away and cleanse you and set you free and give you a birth of a new life inside you. So now that you begin to learn to grow and to learn to live in that life that is in the spirit and God will take you all the way into the full manifestation of his grace and love as you begin. finished in righteousness. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know where you are tonight, but there's one thing I do know. Are you ready for your miracle? Are you ready to call on His name? 
Are you ready for him to come into your heart? Are you ready to heal you and make you whole? Are you ready for him to raise you from the dead? Whatever it takes, but you've got to be willing to humble and surrender all those things in your life and give it all to him and surrender to Jesus and ask him for help. Amen. Simple. Reach out in faith today. Humble yourself to the life of Jesus Christ. Yield yourself to his grace and mercy so he can wash you and cleanse you and heal you. And give birth to a new life on the inside. And blot out the old life on the outside. To transform you and heal you and make you whole. Start a journey into the kingdom of God. With the power of his love and faith. Amen. Right now, reach out to Jesus wherever you are. Reach out to Jesus and call on his name.
Praise the Lord. If you reached out today and call on His name, rejoice and be glad that God has heard your prayer. As you open up your heart, you'll see something has happened to you. Your life will never be the same. Amen. As God touches you, as He heals you and makes you whole, don't forget to let us know. Call us at 705 690 1062. Let us know what God has. You can text us, or you can phone us, or you can write to us. Klaus, K L A U S S A A R I at icloud.com you can email it to us let us know what God has done for your life so that we may rejoice with you and be glad hallelujah and we pray that you have an awesome day and let the peace of God come into your heart that you'll never be the same and may God bless you in Jesus name Amen